And welcome, everyone, to another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Hi, my name is Steve Lacey. And hey, my name is Phil Thompson. It's good to be with you again as we do this uh, usually a weekly podcast. We've been doing this now for what, Steve? Uh, 17 years? Something like that? Uh, yeah, so it's the Middle Ages. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long time. Actually, we've been doing this a long time. We actually did video probably 10 years ago, video uh, podcast, and then we went back to audio. Now we do both. So anyhow, we're a company that works with churches and ministries, and uh, we we talk about tech support stuff for streaming video and mobile apps and all that good stuff. But because we're involved in our own local churches, uh, we also, a part of what we like to do, a part of our vision here uh, is to help churches any way we can. So we talk about volunteer stuff. We talk about uh, how you can have a better church, how you can help uh, your pastor. And if you're a pastor, how you can, uh, you know, just get to the next level. We're all about that. But today we're going to go to kind of a, a, a pretty serious subject uh, that has to do with uh, active shooters in churches. And uh, we had somebody on a few years ago. I can't remember his name right now, but uh, we had an individual on that, that actually they went around. I think they helped train churches what to do in those situations. But today we have Jim Sparks with us. And Jim is uh, actually a, a training, a safety training consultant. And Jim's been around the block a few times. He's been involved in aviation security. He uh, has done uh, things such as uh, uh, firearm safety, uh, concealed, uh, concealed weapons uh, safety, uh, conceal weapon carry safety. I'm, I'm screwing that whole thing up, but uh, I think you know what I'm talking about. Hi, Jim. How are you? Hi, Steve. <laughs> Hello, Phil. Thanks for being with us here today. We're really glad to have you. You actually are uh, from Tucson, Arizona, like we are. We know you. Uh, you're involved in your local church. You're involved with the safety team at Alive Church in Tucson, Arizona. And, uh, you know, we... This is a topic that we don't like to maybe think about. The, the average person, especially the average pastor, doesn't really want to, you know, you, you hope something like this never happens. But since really since 1999, there's been a, a total of 18 fatal church shootings. And, and they, they, they cover a wide range of different things. The deadliest was in 2017 at First Baptist Sutherland uh, Springs in Texas, 26 deaths, including an unborn child. Uh, and there's all sorts of stats out there. The, the latest FBI hate crimes stats report that there have been over 7,000 hate crimes incidents since 2017. And almost 21% of those are motivated by religious bias. And so the problem is out there. The potential for problem is out there. And the purpose of this podcast is really all about just helping you as a church, and I'm talking to people who are listening right now, volunteers or pastors or elders, you know, how you can actually prepare your church, uh, well, quite frankly, for a, a, an active shooter situation. So, Jim, uh, you've been around the block a little bit. One of the shootings that happened a number of years ago was, uh, I believe, in Colorado. It was New Life, uh, New Life Church up there. Uh, tell us a little bit about your involvement and, and, and what you do and how you can help uh, churches. Sure enough, Phil. Um, I happened to be uh, in a situation where I went up to New Life. They do seminars since the, the horrible event that happened there, I believe, 12 or 13 years ago. Yeah, something like that. Um, I can explain that situation briefly and tell you what uh, what they were before the event and what they are now after the event. What they were before the event was uh, uh, they didn't take it serious. They were uh, not targeted in the past. This was a big surprise for them. They did have uh, people watching the place as far as their internal, what I'll call safety team, uh, but uh, they also wore a lot of hats, so they were doing a lot of different things as well. The young man decided to um, attack the church, and he prepared himself. He wrote, you know, the manifesto. He was uh, a troubled young man, 18 years old. Um, that facility is a very large facility. It's 
uh, 75 acres with 350,000 square feet under roof, multiple buildings. The young man decided to uh, set off smoke bombs at three of the doors going into the main building, and then he entered the fourth door. Uh, he shot three people outside. Uh, there were two deaths, and uh, one of the young ladies that he shot, uh, he shot her father as well, but he survived. He came into the building and started shooting down the hallways, and um, miraculously, he didn't hit anybody, but an off-duty sheriff's deputy came out of the auditorium and uh, finished his attack. He, he was not able to survive that afterward. And this, uh, but he had an, uh, he had a rifle and he had uh, fourteen hundred rounds of ammunition in a backpack. Was this a so Sunday he morning? Was prepared. Um, it was not. I believe it was a Saturday. Oh, okay. So the so there weren't a lot of people at the church, or was it there during one of the services? Or? Always a lot of people at that church. Oh, yeah, okay. that's a mega <laughs> church. There's always a lot of people. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they have a school, multiple schools. They have always something going on there. So he could have done that uh, pretty much any day and, and done some real damage if he had been um, better prepared. Uh, and I say that he was fairly prepared, but um, he didn't have it all planned out. I guess he wasn't expecting somebody to be in there and armed. So that brings us to what we do today. Um, there's a group called the Sheepdog Society. And uh, I follow that group on multiple social media platforms. I also get printed material from them. Uh, their whole goal is church safety. I've learned a lot from that group. Uh, I, I, I condone everything pretty much that they, they talk about. And it's all primarily uh, preparation. And what was the I'll name of the give you a list. Again? It's Sheep. called the Sheepdog Society. Yep. Okay. That's an interesting name. <laughs> it is. And so um, when you look at the list of things that they suggest, minimum, bare minimum things, uh, one of the first things that they do is they say, find it in your budget to put a uniformed officer or five, whatever you can afford, uh, to be present during services. Not all churches can do that, and some do it every Sunday. Um, the church that I attend, we've found it in our budget, and we have a uniformed officer that patrols our property, stands out front, greets people, says hi, uh, high fives the kids. Uh, it's been a very, very positive uh, action that we've taken with our, our the people that attend our church. Yeah. Now this, uh, this guy's uh... at first, of course. You know, especially with new people, hey, did you guys have trouble here? You know, that kind of stuff. But uh, it's uh, it's been very positive. And as a matter of fact, some of our deputies that have done this off-duty uh, 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 gig with the sheriff's department have actually started attending our church. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a real blessing in itself. Yeah. Uh, so, but they um, – go ahead, Steve. I was just, just throwing in here. You, you mentioned off-duty. Um sheriff's department or whatever. Do you happen to know the rate that they charge? Just give our audience a kind of a feel for whether they're talking tens, hundreds, or thousands of dollars. I do. No, it's about $32 an hour. Okay. And uh, they generally have a three-hour minimum, but every department is different. So uh, in, in our area, it's the Pima County Sheriff's Department, hmm. and uh, they do have a three-hour minimum which is covered on Sunday because we have three services. Saturday is one service, but uh, we pay the minimum, and um, we're glad to do it. We have not, um, I don't believe, and I'm not at the upper level of the church, of course, but uh, I don't believe there's any regret at all. It's been, uh, it's been a good thing for us. Yeah. So that's one of the first things they recommend you do. Uh, one of the other things that they recommend you do is uh, get some radios. Now, with radios, you got to have people to wear them. That's the other thing. One of the biggest challenges is getting volunteers uh, to be there every Sunday. 
Now, if you've got a uniformed officer there, how important is that? Well, four eyes or eight eyes or 12 eyes are better than two. Uh, they learned that at New Life in Colorado. Um, so, what did they do after the shooting? Well, they put on staff a security person. He gets paid. His job is to keep volunteers, do a schedule, uh, actually enlist more volunteers, and uh, keep the keep the whole security safety of that campus uh, at, at the forefront. It's not just about carrying a gun and being prepared to shoot somebody. There have been situations where you have people arguing. We had a gentleman have a seizure in our lobby, medical conditions. So it's not just about uh, being prepared to shoot someone if you have to. That is part of it. But it's more than that. It, that's why we don't call uh, our group at our church a security team. We call it a safety team. And uh, but up there, um, that's such a big operation, and they ask their volunteers sometimes to work 18, 20 hours a week. And um, it's tough to keep um, of people on on their in their volunteer list to keep doing that every week. Right. And, you know, people have lives, and um, yeah, that's one of the challenges. Sometimes, uh, it is. Yeah. So what they do uh, is they, when they interview people that are interested in it, they always bring the wife in and uh, they do a body language study with the wife and um, they give them the good, the bad, and the ugly. And um, if uh, they see the wife rolling her eyes or crossing her legs and going, <coughs> they, they typically don't ask that person to come on to the team. So, uh, you know, if they don't have the support of their wife or their or their significant significant other, then it's going to be uh, a short term proposition, more than likely. I can see this appealing to I mean, men and women, right? I would assume there would be some women that would be yes. interested as well. Of course, yep. So they're looking; they'd be looking at the husband, going, "Hmm, he's squirming." Then <laughs> she's wow. So it is, you know, and the weekend, that's the weekend. So, you know, if you're not on staff and, you know, you have a vacation or you just, you know, want to go play golf or whatever, instead of going to church, you know, it's, uh, it's tough to keep everybody committed every weekend. But having said all that, that's one of the things that you, uh, you need to do. You need to have some people, some eyes prepared, uh, and, uh, we talked about radios for if, if, if you have four guys, have each one of them with a radio. Now that doesn't mean if you have a deputy or a police officer there, you can talk to them on their radio because you can't. <coughs> so what you do is you give them one of your radios. So then they have two radios. They have the radio that belongs to the church. And of course they have their own uh, communication radio with your police department or sheriff's department. So, Jim, um, um, yeah. as we talk about this, you know, as, and we talk about the vulnerability of, of churches, so the the first idea then would be to put together a plan. No matter what size you are, even if you're small, you can still form some kind of a, a safety team, and you yeah. need to identify the right people, as you were talking earlier, you know, people that really mm -hmm. have a heart for it, and obviously people you can trust, and people that you know, our high integrity. And so you, you want to form a team. And uh, after you form your team, what do you do next? Uh, you know, just kind of sit around? Or so you talk about, <laughs> well, yeah, Phil, you talk about where the exits are. You talk about if you have an active shooter, uh, you don't want to shoot one of your parishioners. <laughs> right. Um, you want to be able to, uh, 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 you know, be prepared for, anything and now uh, we have multiple entrances to our facility 
you can't watch every one of them, especially, you know, the size of our, our churches. You know, we're not a mega church. We're a decent sized church, but right. you, you can't uh, cover every entrance and exit all the time. So, unfortunately, you have to think like a bad guy <laughs> and um, uh, be prepared for that. But having yeah. said all that, if you have enough people, maybe you can keep an eye on every entrance and every exit. Uh, so I guess that's part of it. So I guess the next step is you know you put together a team, you go over some of these basic things that you d- discussed, and then probably you need to put together some kind of a practice. Uh, you know, like a bunch of what ifs. And I know there's you and I talked probably about a month ago, and I put down some notes mm-hmm. from talking to you. Because uh, I was concerned about my own church, uh, so you, you want to plan, and you need to understand the exits and and all those kind of things. Think a little bit like a like a bad guy, but then you you've got to do something with your team where you maybe practice something, practice some drills, perhaps uh, practice some what ifs, uh, and then at what level do you bring the congregation into some of this stuff? <laughs> Well, that's a good question, Phil. And it's, uh, I don't think there's a good solid answer to that. I will tell you at the church in Colorado, they actually send all of their dedicated safety members to a uh, tactical pistol school. They have a minimum size pistol they can carry with a minimum size caliber. They have taken it to a very tactical level. Um, one of the gentlemen that was on the safety team before the shooting, had a very, very, very small semi-automatic pistol in his pocket, and he was way outgunned. Right. He was not prepared for what happened. So because of that, and because they have somebody in charge on staff, they have actually taken it to the highest level. Uh, they have deputies. They also have this team. They have uh, training programs in place for uh, their people, their volunteers. Uh, they have to go through a pretty rigorous uh, pistol course. And um, it's uh, it's one of those things that you, you can train somebody and uh, they can end up putting on you. So yes, be prepared for that. So um, this is, obviously you're talking again about new life in Colorado. And I think it was Colorado I have, yeah. Springs, I think. And, uh, it is but, you, but you're not you're not suggesting that that we arm. I mean, you could have a safety team, and they don't have to be armed, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. As I said earlier, it's not it's not about being prepared to shoot back right. every time. Right. Uh, the and I know many congregations, a lot of their people are armed. Um, and you hopefully you don't know it or you do know it and um you're prepared that pers- that person is prepared to react if need be um you know we are talking about worst case scenarios the situation right. at new life was horrible and um it, when i look at the cases that come to mind that you were talking about since 1999 and i think if there was one person in there that was armed what would the result be then how would that have ended that event and not be as horrible as it was pick an event either one any of them so yes i guess i'm getting back to the firearm thing but you know, uh, I'm a firm believer in fighting fire with fire, and the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. So let's, uh, and, you know, I'm sitting here thinking about what some pastors might be, you know, and, and I understand your background. I have a background, too, just not as obviously as large as yours, but uh, but there's some other things you can do. I mean, like preparing your, your facility, right? I mean, there's things you can talk about. Absolutely. Like lockdown stuff. Uh I had a I had a, a gal who oversees our children's ministry at my church, and we were talking about this subject. And you know, one, and she also works in schools, and she says one of the things they train us is to lock lock the doors. 
And she goes, now, I don't know, like in, in our church, like, you know, there's windows and stuff in the, in the classroom, the classroom doors. But she goes, I, I'm not sure people are really that excited about having locks on those doors where they can't get to their kids. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you're looking at, at trying to optimize your facility here uh, with, you know, what you can do, uh, emergency exits, locking certain things, safety drills. There are other other options out there, right? There are many options out there. And one of the things that the Sheepdog Society talks about are uh, temporary locks that you can slam down on a door from the inside to keep somebody from coming in. Uh, there are uh, different uh, tactics on how to get out of a building uh, without hopefully being shot. There's just, uh, you know, can you go through the window if you have to? Uh, so, yeah, it's it's about a situational awareness. Um, yeah. And I think that's the key. And that's one of the things we do at our facility is we are watching all the time. And uh, an example, I had a gentleman drive into our parking lot in a van. I didn't recognize the van. And keep in mind, I'm there every service, Saturday night and three services on Sunday. So I know, I don't say I know everybody, <laughs> but. When I see a strange van pull into the parking lot, a cargo van, pull in, make a circle and pull out, I have to wonder why. Nothing happened. Right. But I was prepared. And that's the kind of thing you have to watch for. You have what to is... watch for people. I'll give you another example. One day, our deputy sheriff came up to me and said, who's got the gray car in the back? I said, well, let's go check it out. Why do you ask? There's two rifles and, and a pair of uh, combat boots in there and some ammunition laying on the seat. I didn't recognize the car. I asked staff. Nobody recognized the car. The deputy sheriff ran the plate, gave me the name. I went inside. Oh, yeah, we knew who that is. He had been at the range the day before and didn't empty his car. Very, very innocent. Hmm. However, he could have went the other way. Right. Situational awareness. I, I think that's very important. Situational Steve, awareness. Yeah. So one of the things you were talking about earlier, I'm just thinking, you know, the typical pastor out there listening to this message and, you know, well, what can I do to, to make myself not as much of a target as it may, I may be? And you talked about, you know, the first thing was if you can put a uh, uniformed officer out front, then, then that's going to send a message to, to anyone that may be considering. Are there, I assume there's other things with, you know, just at least talking about the safety program with either mentioning you have a safety team with the congregation, other things that would, you know, kind of, if we did have a crazy, then uh, send them down the street somewhere else, you know, to, to a less secure. Are there things you can do to um, kind of deter someone from, you know, that, that van that showed up. He may have seen the seen you or the the other uh, off-duty officer there and said, I'm out of here. Are there other things like that you can do to your facility or with well, people? And, and that's exactly right, Steve. Um, there is another level that we even we can go to, and that's something we don't do that we're talking about is that when our deputy comes, he's in his own civilian car. The next level up is to actually pay for a patrol car as well. Now that can act as uh, a deterrent at two separate entrances and exits. You can actually put the car at another entrance and then have the deputy or police officer at the other entrance. And that's our next step, and we're, we are going to do that. Um, at some point here in the near future, we we have a lot of road construction in front of our church right now, so it's mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we're ready to do that. And mm -hmm. the, the cost is very, very, very minimal. Uh, you do have to have a certain amount of insurance to cover the vehicle in case there's an incident on the property. Right. But uh, mm -hmm. other than the insurance rider, um, 
the cost of having the patrol car is negligible. Doesn't add that much to your uh, total cost to have the deputy there. It reminds so me of having the. I'm sorry. It reminds me of a, a, a incident. I don't know if you guys have heard about it or not, but one of the police forces, it may not be in this country, put up a, a cardboard uh, police officer with a radar gun in his hand and to deter the speeding. And it had a, a very good impact on speeding on this road with just having a cardboard guy I out saw there. that, yeah. yeah. You can uh, take your wife's uh, blow dryer. So look, we're, we're running out of time here. <laughs> and I said blow dryer. It looks, like looks kind of like a, a radar gun, right? All right. So uh, yeah. Jim, appreciate your input here on this. And you certainly you know, come with tons of experience. I think one thing I do want to say to those listening, and that is something you can also do as a pastor or as a leader in your church, uh, especially in the area of ministry, and that is uh, be aware of the potentiality of domestic violence. So if you've got somebody in your congregation that's going through a messy divorce or having some really serious relationship or, or marital problems, uh, it, I think it's just from my experience doing pastoral work, it, it's a good idea to kind of keep up the up the date on what's happening there in that relationship, because uh, there's some stat out there that something like 20 percent of the violence in churches has to do with domestic violence. And so what it does is it spills over from going on at home. Somebody you know decides they're going to do something nasty to their their spouse or 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 their boyfriend or girlfriend. And so I think another thing we can do as pastors and leaders is, you know, know your congregation uh, as best you can, depending on the size. I know that's not always easy, but, uh, and you know, if there's, if there's problems there, marital problems, you know, keep, just keep abreast on those things because, uh, you know, sometimes things can get messy, but anyhow, that's my two cents. I can so, speak to that briefly, Phil. We yeah, had a ahead. situation very similar to that. A young couple were arguing in our patio behind the auditorium, and um, it didn't look like it was uh, going to get to that to the highest level, but it was very heated. And mm. our deputy noticed it. He came to me. He said, "Do you know these people?" I said, "No, I don't recognize them." He went out there and said, "Hey, what's going on?" And uh, oh, we're just having a rough time in our marriage. Uh, I'm a border patrol officer and she doesn't like my hours and we just always talking about it and rehashing all that stuff and uh, consequently uh, she went to the car cooled off a little bit came in they sat down in church and um, the, uh, they came up to the officer later and, and thanked him for uh, coming out to see if everything was okay that's good, good, good but deal. you're right you're right exactly it's not all about shooters it's not all about it could be a seizure, it could be a fight, it could be a lot of different things that right. si your situational awareness can uh, help alleviate yeah. some of that. Yeah, that's to me the takeaway. We're running out of time here. Uh, so we are, <laughs> we're out of time. We've been talking with Jim Jim Sparks here uh, and Jim is a, uh, a security consultant. And uh, Jim, uh, if people have questions for you, uh, should they just reach reach you through us? Maybe they could send an email to us and we can reach out to you. Would that be the best way to get a hold of you? That's probably the best way, Phil. Yep. Okay, good. Because I'm and sure I'd be there's... glad to answer any questions I can. So yeah, oh, I figured you would be. And so uh, you know, I, I, there's a lot of questions you, you, when you talk about this this very serious you know, subject, there's a lot of questions I know that people have. And so if you want to get a hold of Jim, just go through us, support at streamingchurch.tv. Uh, we're streamingchurch.tv. That's what we do, but we do other things too. And uh, support at streamingchurch.tv is the way to go. And so situational awareness, very important when we talk about this this topic, this subject, planning, get to get, getting a, a team together, uh, practicing some things, you know, thinking ahead, looking at, at uh, possibilities out there. And as we were saying, a lot of what ifs, but if you can at least get the head start on some of those things, uh, you can help protect your congregation and help protect those who come to your church. So we're out of time. Um, Steve, thank you for your time here. And Jim, thank you so much. And folks, thank you for spending a little bit of time with us on the Church Solutions Podcast. Uh, we hope that you have a great day. We'll catch you again next time. Take care.